Now, if you look really close here, what will you notice? This is an aluminum 80. As you can see down below it there, there's, it's not touching the bottom. I can actually walk over to it. I can kind of slide it over. I can even push down on it a little bit and it'll simply pop right back up. Now, I just finished a single tank side mount dive. This bottle has exactly 500 PSI in it. And if it wouldn't be for the first stage itself, this tank would be laying flat. <music> What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Hicker Scuba and Marina. If you're new to our channel, do me a huge favor. Hit this little subscribe button real quick and ding that little bell as well. That way you guys are gonna be notified every time we upload new content. Now I wanna show you something really quick. This is gonna be a really short video, but hopefully it explains why I teach the way I teach. Now, as an instructor, one of the first things that we teach students is proper buoyancy. So the first night in the pool, we get them in the water and we try to get them weighted properly. Now, typically when I do this, I don't strap a tank to their back. So I'm still gonna do the standard weight test that all divers learn how to do. It's where you hold a breath at the surface, you float at eye level, and uh, when you exhale, you're gonna go underwater. But typically you'd do this completely geared up with all your weights on. However, with my students, if I'm training them, say in aluminum cylinders, whether it's a child or a smaller person with say an aluminum 63 or an aluminum 80, I don't do a weight test with their cylinder. We completely take the cylinder out as a variable and we still get them properly weighted and almost get them spot on the first time. Let me explain real quick why that is. Now, if you look really close here, what will you notice? This is an aluminum 80. As you can see down below it there, there's, it's not touching the bottom. I can actually walk over to it. I can kind of slide it over. I can even push down on it a little bit and it'll simply pop right back up. Now, I just finished a single tank side mount dive. This bottle has exactly 500 PSI in it. And if it wouldn't be for the first stage itself, this tank would be laying flat. But as you can see, it is positively buoyant here at the surface. And if I weighted myself with this cylinder when it's completely full, then my weight ratio is not gonna be quite right. So with aluminum cylinders, I'll always take the, the cylinder off of my student prior to doing a weight test. Now, a couple of things to remember. First of all, aluminum, they get very, very floaty whenever they're, say, down to 500. And why 500? Why, do we, why does most instructors say 500? Well, that's typically what you're going to have during your safety stop, say, on a warm tropical destination. You know, the boat crews will tell you, come up with about 500 PSI, no less than that. And that's where we get that from. But remember, aluminum 80s get really floaty, and all aluminum cylinders really do it but steel doesn't. So if you're training a student and you've got a steel cylinder on or if they're wearing a steel cylinder, you're gonna do their uh, weight test with a cylinder. You don't have to do that with an aluminum. But guys, I really hope you understood the purpose of this video is teach you a little bit more about buoyancy and weight ratios. And I hope you understand why I train my students the way I do. Because I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give me a big thumbs up. Definitely share it. If you got any questions on buoyancy control, weighting issues, trim, I'm going to drop you several different videos down in the comment section below or down in the description below. And hopefully it'll help you grow as a diver as well. But that's going to be for it, our video for today, guys. Take care. God bless. And I'll see you in the next video.